Good morning, and welcome to the Daily Devotion from St. Swithin's Church at Pimble. It's Wednesday, November the 24th, 2021. We pray that you and your families are safe and well. In Pimble, we are reminded this week that it is indeed spring, as we spring from summer-like temperatures and still blue skies to winter-like days of jumpers, Ugg boots and umbrellas. We can only guess what to choose from our wardrobes each day. Our reading today is quite lengthy and brings us to the conclusion of Joshua in chapters 23 and 24. You may choose to pause this recording now and read through the Bible and find Joshua's final message to his people. The conclusion of Joshua brings a renewal of God's covenant with Israel. Joshua inspires the people by challenging their commitment to serve the one true God, to whom Joshua has followed his entire life, above all other gods. His words are a model of communication as he recounts God's amazing acts on Israel's behalf in Egypt, in the wilderness, and then in the promised land. His imploring of his people is triggered by their disbelief and their continued worship of idols and false gods. In today's society, what are the false gods and idols we see others worship? It could be said that last week in Los Angeles we saw the worship of a musician who was seeking the court's separation from a conservatorship under her father. We observed crowds of young and not so young people who had spent years of their lives following this no doubt talented girl, often to the exclusion of many other aspects of their lives, such as faith, education and family. And though we may admire their dedication, we cannot help but think about their future. What now? They won. The court agreed with them. The fight is over. For Joshua, the fight to eliminate those false gods and idols from the lives of the Israelites was far from over. And he was profoundly worried about the future a future which may include the separation of Israel from God once again. In chapter 24, verse 20, Joshua warns, If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster upon you and make an end of you after he has been so good to you. Decisions are never easy. Many young people today are faced with the enormous decisions affecting their future at such a young age. And of course, in the last couple of years, this has been compounded exponentially by the pandemic. It is important that those who are significant in the lives of these young people are there to guide them, to give them the benefit of your wisdom and experience and provide some perspective. For our HSC students this year, last year and next year, we need to reassure them that the Lord is always watching, listening and guiding them on their life's journey and an exam is but just a small part of their life's journey and significant at the time but quickly usurped by the rest of their lives. Joshua's words to his people were intended as an inspiration and guidance for the future. He knew his time on earth was coming to an end and he knew exactly where he was going when the Lord called him. But like any good and caring father, He was concerned for the future of his children, his nation, if they turned away from the Lord. He had seen enough death and destruction 
to want to protect future genera generations from more of the same. But the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. However, this declaration was not enough for Joshua. He knew the people needed concrete reminders of the words they had spoken. And so he made a covenant for the people and there at Shechem he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak tree, near the holy place of the Lord. I wonder how many Israelites visited the stone to reinform, reaffirm their faith. How many people have visited this place up until today? Are there any stones or sacred places that you visit to do the same? You may feel the same as I do, that the place that anchors my faith is the church. It has been our challenge over the last two years to anchor our faith over Zoom. And although we must be grateful for this technology, that the pandemic impacted our lives, that the ability to see and catch up with each other and our families, as well as our church family, I think the phrase I have heard most commonly over the last two weeks has been, it's not the same. Joshua's story ends here, but does it? His messages are as relevant today as they were then. Put away false gods and idols and follow the one true Lord God, our Father. As we approach the festive season and the celebration of the birth of our Saviour Jesus Christ, I encourage you to share with the young and the youngest in our families and community that we should worship what is real and lasting, the gift of Jesus. Although there will be so much talk of presents and playstations and gifts and community, computer games, of decorations and dolls and trees and tinsel. It is the stars that shine above us and the star that guided the world so many years ago that will guide us to worship. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your example of your servant Joshua, his faith and his leadership, Help us all to remember his message and to turn away from false gods and idols. Give us strength, energy and good health to inspire those with whom we come in contact to follow you and find the peace and joy and reward of a life following your laws. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Remember at this time that we're back uh, on deck full time at the church office. Please call us or email us if we can help you at any time. We've got such a lot of special events coming up that you can actually come to. If you need help with transport, give us a call. There are lots of people willing to come and pick you up and bring you to be with our church family. I wish you well. Take care.